So so ni biasa after every session macam ni yang cukup-cukup uh, berharga buat kita uh, kita akan tutup dengan sesi makan lah Ustaz oh, so, oh, makan lah okay. So uh, tapi makan ni lain sikit dia bukan we will not indulge okay. as you said <laughs> Ini ke makanan dia? Bukan <laughs> <laughs> mentang salad <laughs> Sihat ni Ustaz Sihat, sihat. <laughs> So uh, kita akan teruskan dengan sesi makan dengan Ulazat Baik, kita sampai ke segmen di mana kita akan uh, menikmati juadah yang telah dibawakan oleh Ulazat dan biasa kita ada saudara Amir daripada Ulazat untuk memperkenalkan kita dan memberi deskripsi apa ni kau bawa ni sebenarnya ni Ok, pada kali ini kita uh, chef saya buat benda yang lain selain daripada yang selalu kita buat lauk kan hmm. so uh, memandangkan ini segmen yang kelima kononnya yang terakhir lah kan so kita buat something different which is a dessert Uh, it is a brownie tapi uh, I'm sure most of us will love Belgian chocolate punya brownie uh, ni lah yang 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 disediakan lah uh, jadi apa yang special uh. tentang brownie ni Meh? ok uh, I'm sure kita semua kalau dengan coklat je memang a lot of things in mind macam betul? ni mesti mengemukkan gini so yes. the main so, dif- kurma je ah, betul oh, sama, sama 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 kurma <laughs> Ni air kek ni macam kurma dalam coklat. <laughs> luar luar dalam badam. <laughs> so untuk yang ini orang rumah saya dia menyediakan uh, menggunakan uh, almond powder. Hmm. Almond Jadi powder tepung instead, badam ah. Uh, tepung badam instead of normal oh, tepung dia menggunakan almond almond powder. Jadi tak ada gandum eh. Dia tak ada gandum. So that's the first difference. The Jadi ni gan, gan, apa tu badam dia di luar tau bukan oh, di dalam kurma. Asyik, <laughs> Second thing is the the, the cocoa powder itself. Ha. Instead of menggunakan coklat uh, macam yang apa rose yang jangan cakap nak brand kan nanti kena pula. Uh, cocoa powder 100% cocoa powder Belgian chocolate. Okay, uh, the third thing is the ni lah crust fat butter. Yes. Uh, that's the difference. What was the apa perbezaan crust fat butter ni? Butter yang daripada Lembu yang makan rumput Lembu yang makan rumput Jadi kalau kita uh, Fikirkan tentang Lembu Pemakanan Dia yang natural adalah Rumput Jadi bila Dia diberi makanan uh, Natural dia Seperti rumput um, Susu dia Daging dia dalam badan dia uh, Dan Produk-produk lain Seperti uh, Butter Kualiti dia juga lain Dan um, Uh, lemak yang di produce oleh lembu seperti ini is of a higher quality uh, it means that it doesn't make you it doesn't make you sick lah basically meat that will make you healthy as compared to if you were to compare a cow that is given food that is not meant for it seperti corn or those pellets eh? uh, animal feed uh, that is not natural uh, process That is processed food. So, binatang yang diberi processed food akan jadi sakit. Kalau kita makan binatang tu, kita pun sakit. Kalau manusia diberi processed food, kita juga akan sakit. Jadi, oh, yes, yes. Ha, there's so, a chain lah. There's a chain, ya. Yeah. So, going back to natural sources, kembali kepada asal hmm. dan sebagainya. Sebab tu bila dulu Nabi makan kambing, Nabi makan daging, tanpa tak kena gout, tak kena darah tinggi. Ha, ya, yeah, betul. Pasal ada punya kambing, semua makan natural food. Yeah. Ha, kambing sekarang makan, oh, makan semua fast food. Betul kan? So, so ya. Yeah. Animal feed lah. Okay, so going back to apa tu? We talk about grass fed butter. So, pasal butter, cakap pasal minyak. Ni uh, bahan-bahan yang diperlukan <coughs> untuk uh, menyatukan ramuan-ramuan tu kan? So, ramai. What would be a good choice of butter? Okay, kita ada butter. Kita ada margarin. Kita ada ghee. Kita ada minyak. Kita ada minyak. Zaitun Ya, minyak sayur minyak. So, ya, yeah, on the extent uh, Soalannya bukan daripada perspektif baker kan Untuk hmm. jadikan kuih yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, so apa yang baik untuk kita Adalah lemak yang natural Seperti uh, Minyak zaitun Minyak kelapa uh, Minyak sapi uh, Butter Dan segala yang Minyak tu tak diproses seperti minyak sayur. Minyak sayur tu sebenarnya toksik untuk badan. Oh. Yeah. So uh, all this while we've been told that vegetable uh, vegetable oil is healthy. But think about it. 
you cannot get oil from vegetables. There is no oil from vegetables. Yeah. So what what is oily? Things that are supposed to be oily, seperti uh, lemak, seperti santan, kan? Minyak kelapa, uh, minyak zaitun, kacang, that, lah, ground nut kacang, pun. Yeah, memang ada minyaknya. Yeah, yes, yes, yes. Sawit. Sawit, uh, sawit memang ada minyak dia. Cold right. press lah. Uh, uh, yes. Yeah. So, if, if you think about it, keep it simple. Things that are corn, uh, soy, sunflower. Uh, sunflower, safflower, canola. Okay. These are not natural sources of oil. Oh, These are not. Kenapa yang besar dalam hidup saya? <laughs> <laughs> Ini sebenarnya uh, bila di dimasukkan dalam badan sebagai pemakanan, uh, badan kita akan try to burn this off but cannot burn it off because it's really not natural it's not natural and process it, lah yes it's, it's highly processed it's oh. industrial industrially processed you know all this while I ingat niat sayur ni bagus pasal sayur lah oh. yeah. so, so, so all this while we, we've been we've been told that um, yeah. minyak sayur tu bagus sebab sayur lah kan sayur, sayur tu sihat dan tapi murah. dan murah yeah. so actually um, if you were to study back the origins of vegetable oil They are actually industrial waste. So, sebab tu murah. Sebelum ni, benda tu diorang nak buang. And you need a lot of that stuff to process, to make it into oil. So, the process itself. The processing is what makes it so unstable. It's been heated and reheated and added solvents and extracted and... Macam that, minyak kereta lah kan? Minyak kereta, exactly. Yeah. Seperti minyak kereta. Bila higher lead ke alam dan sebagainya. Yeah. Kan? In fact, going back to talking about minyak ni, Nabi SAW pun dalam kehidupan dia, Nabi punya minyak ada dua je. Yeah. Nabi ada dua minyak. If it's not zaitun, ataupun zait yang datang daripada zaitun, Nabi oh, akan pakai yeah. clarified butter. Yes, only. It's ghee. Ghee. So, clarified butter. Mm. Nabi akan masak pakai clarified butter. In, in correct proportion. Yeah. Orang pakai ghee, healthy. Tapi kalau pakai satu tin, habislah. Sirah Nabi, only these two oils I mentioned. Zait, which is zaitun, and you can clarify butter. Right. Which is amazing. I, mean, I, I mentioned this in a previous episode, that uh, dalam perubatan Ayurveda, uh. they've been using ghee as a form of medicine for thousands of years. Uh-huh. And now we know, uh, because of uh, Ustaznya, apa yang Ustaz uh, sampaikan tadi, that it is also uh, a sunnah of Rasulullah SAW. Yeah. Okay. The time has come for us to process this brownie. Yeah. Thank you, Ustaz. Okay. Okay. Biasa, kita akan okay. uh, okay. dibuatkan okay. uh, apa ni yang dia buatlah tetamu kita lah kan. So, so cuba, ya? seperti Sebenarnya. apa yang Amir katakan tadi, uh, serius, Ustaz. Uh, memang selalu kita berbual begini. So, the reason why this is healthy as compared to other brownies is because this is blood sugar friendly lah. It's blood sugar stable. There is no sugar in it. There is almond flour. Okay. There is all the other sources of... of There's no sugar. Oh yes, I forgot to mention. Uh, it is there's only monk fruit sweetener. Yeah, I think yeah. you mentioned monk fruit sweetener. Monk fruit, fruit sweetener. sweetener. Instead of because if you notice, selalunya kalau brownies macam ini, they will put lots of sugar. Correct me if I'm wrong. I'm not coming from baker. Lots of like, sugar yeah. and a lot of uh, so, uh, wheat flour. Yeah, wheat flour. So mm. instead of that, we she replace it with a monk mm-hmm. fruit sweetener lah. Masha Allah. Masha Allah. Sudah. Alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah. It is the same you. Hmm. Sama. Tak tak ada beza. Is it is almond flour is almond powder more expensive than almond flour? Oh yes, I, I know because I I ha- I follow my wife to the baking bakery shop to to buy the flour. Hey, yeah. Hey, yeah. 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 Hmm. So, so mahal gila ni mahal. Mahal gila. Then sebenarnya memang uh, badam tu dia grind sampai jadi tepung. Oh itu ya? Ah itu je. Ini sebenarnya penuh kacang kan? Penuh ni? kacang aja betul. Itu yang buat dia sihat. Dia sedap. Yeah, Yes, of course. It's a little bit drier. Tapi it's is it, it the taste is the same. Yeah. It's almost the same texture like any normal cake. Um, of course, you can't expect to be moist lah, because that will, will mean that there's a lot of fats inside ataupun a lot of trans fats kan. Mm-hmm. So dry is good. Nabi pun makan benda kering. Nabi punya roti pun because of the health component of the ingredients, it was not moist like your normal white bread and sebagainya. Uh, though it's dry, tapi it's nice. It's nice. Nah, sedap. Masya Allah. Mm. My regards to the chef. Oh, yeah. Dari mana dia belajar resipi ni? Ah, hmm. Mana dia <laughs> mana dia mentaah ilmu ni? Ha. Ni maybe alternatives lah. Kalau nak use use tak kalau kita nak buat something itu kalau kita nak buat change, you make that change, sacrifice. 
you, you sacrifice the dollars the money sends now the thing is selalu orang cakap pasal going back to food lah eh people shy away from sunnah food sunnah food ni orang selalu kata ala penat lah ustaz kalau nak makan benda yang ada minyak zaitun je ada kurma ada kismis je penat lah Sebenarnya sunnah food ni, you all nak kena faham. It's not just about the ingredients, again. It's about the approach, it's about the technique. Sunnah food ni, dia bukan barang yang dimasukkan, tapi cara disiapkan. Hmm. It might not even contain makanan sunnah pun. Ingredient sunnah. Tapi the manner of how you do it, the manner of the thought process of preparing a meal, is also sunnah food. Producing something which is healthy, something which is good, that is sunnah. You tak pakai minyak zaitun, you tak pakai korma, you tak pakai kismis. Apa benda yang sunnah? The thought process of making a food that's not only delicious, you don't jeopardize the taste, tapi it is something which is all natural. Yeah, And again, orang Melayu kita ni, masakan sedap. Yeah. Tapi again, lari daripada the traditional thought process. On all my travels, yang I pernah rasa yang betul-betul ni sunnah tradition, are the Italians punya. Cooking. Italians? Italians. So when I travel to Europe, yeah. I'm much more amazed with that part of Europe lah. Italians, Croatians dan sebagainya. When they prepare food, fine dining, You takkan nampak banyak macam makan kita nasi dua pinggan hmm. lepas tu sotong 14 kerat <laughs> ha, kan I pernah makan I tengok kenyang ke ni ya Allah uh, small portion ni eh. eh, eh, small tu ada statement <laughs> kira kan kalau Ustaz Fiza makan ciput ni gitu eh, ini kira kan belum baca bismillah baru kat bak je dah habis <laughs> ha, kan tapi bila kita makan lepas tu kita dengar chef dia datang dengan penuh semangat be you know eko ke the food dia you know, dia the, 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 menghayati tu dia cerita sampai datuk sotong tu pun dah kenal. Hmm. We fish this, we got this squid from the sea of the Caspian Sea. Dia cerita, dia cerita. And dia cerita tu how they cook, how they sear, how they ensure that the squid die, how they ensure that the property semua dah dibuangkan dan sebagainya. And then what kind of ingredients they use, or the basil from the fresh mountain. So it's the appreciation of the, the appreciation food. appreciation of the food, the technique of preparing because you want person to enjoy. Kalau dalam Islam kita selawat dan sebagainya, kita doa. But their thought is to make someone happy. You bila makan, bila dengar, eh, eh, alah, kenyang. Makan pun pada-pada. Hmm. So, sunnah ni is not about just masukkan benda-benda ingredient. Kadang-kadang you masukkan semua benda sunnah pun tak sedap. Hmm. Dia akan jumpa dah setis. Tapi the thought process, the niat, the intention, is not jiwa dan raga dia. And that is what is meant by sunnah. Again, I remind you, Nabi pernah kata, ditanyakan, what's the best food ya Rasulullah? Nabi tak kata kurma. Nabi tak kata kismis. Nabi cakap the best kind of food, It's a food that can be shared with everyone. And we are sharing the food. Thank you. My regards to the chef. Memang sedap. I think uh, on my my part, I think I feel like uh, I'm blessed lah. Because uh, like, likewise, macam you juga, you are sharing your journey with your wife. Your wife is the one also, apa, macam mana tu, prepare the food for you. So, uh, for, me, for me and my wife, we feel like it is a journey. Macam uh, saya pun dulu masalah, macam-macam masalah before I made this fine gentleman. So, bila, bila it is like an experiment lah. Kita tukar, kita cuba. Instead of normal tepung, kita guna ke almond flour. Instead of margarine, kita tukar pada ni. And and one of the first thing is, yalah of course sugar. Kita tukar, kita, kita tukar among fruit sweetener. Then, it become more and more interesting. I find it very interesting. Because, orang semua fikir, like, like I mentioned before in the previous episode, uh, makanan yang healthy itu makanan rabbit. I keep on saying the same thing because I got it from my friend. Dia cakap, Mereka aku tak boleh ambil makan ni. Makanan yang rasa macam makanan rabbit. Pasal lalat sayur je. Dia cakap, kau boleh betul lah. Aku makan best je. You know, I, I, I share them that way. Because when, when my wife prepare the food, Alhamdulillah. Dia cakap, ini ni betul ni. Ini, ini yang betul-betul. Macam ni. Ustaz pula share, cakap, how is it uh, like butter? I, I feel more more yakin lah. You know, macam uh, Rasulullah cuma gunakan butter, uh, ghee dengan olive oil. You know, which is what in line with with what yeah. we are doing. Uh. Yeah, what you eat actually defines you. One of the best meats I've ever eaten kan? It's not cow ataupun mutton meat. This is another sharing. I makan rabbit meat. Rabbit halal dia makan, kan? Yeah? Yeah. So, sekali tu, saya jalan dengan Makiai. So, Makiai kata, kita makan kelinci sebentar nanti. Saya yeah. tak tahu kelinci tu apa benda. <laughs> Ingat dia ke apa? Sekali dah makan, nak pergi belakang. Ya Allah, rupanya rabbit. But the, the, the interesting thing was, I mean, I, I got to accept it. And I saw that rabbit tu makan apa? Dia selalu kaya sayur, carrot dan kan? The beta carotene can be seen on the meat. Jadi bila the, 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 the skin, they remove the fur, you could see that the whole meat, there are the spots of, uh, spots of orange. So what you eat defines you. So kalau you katakan, the byproducts of a cow that eat natural grass will somehow inspire the entire system of the cow to produce good meat like your black angus ke apa ke kan 100% fully uh, grass fed 
it will it will create a beautiful taste. There's another technique. Kenapa kita kadang-kadang rasa daging ni tak sedap? It's not about the grass fat juga. Halal datang tu bukan pasal lembu tu disembelih dalam keadaan apa. Macam mana dia disembelih? Kerana bila mak, bila daging tu ataupun haiwan tu disembelih dengan cara yang mengejut, dengan cara yang zalim, dengan cara yang oh main kuat dan sebagainya, dia takut. When you are what do you do? You flex all your muscle. Keras. Keras. Jadi itu yang buat daging tak sedap. So, the meat kalau you rasa, the most beautiful ones are the one that is personally grown ataupun those that come from Australia. Because they have a certain technique to slaughter the animal in a sense that dia tak takut. They confident hmm. to be slaughtered in the hands of the slaughterer. Dengan tak ada noise, dengan tak ada hmm. in, apa tu, orang kacau dan sebagainya. Lepas tu orang tak faham. Asal kita tak boleh tengok korban kat Singapura? Because yang pakcik yang pegang mikrofon tu lah. Allah! Kambing tu takut. Yeah. You're listening to a lot of sounds before you die and lepas tu ada darah, sedara-sedara you. Yes. The smell, the smell of death is strong. So, tu akan buat daging tak sedap. So, halal also datang dalam perspektif itu juga. Macam mana zibaha yeah. ataupun sembelih tu dilaksanakan. Again, there is hukum, which is the, let, the letter of the law dalam agama. Orang selalu terlepas pandang the spirit of the law. Yeah. Ruh keagamaan. Bagaimana nak dilaksanakan, apa benefit dia. Jadi, kita bila kita go through on this part, it's not just about the letter of the law. Tapi, to also appreciate the ruh, the spirit of the law. Like how kalau orang kata define, oh, kalau apa nama, the kick must be moist dan sebagainya. Well, that's the letter of the law. Tapi the whole roh is that you are, there's a story behind that thing and that makes the food beautiful. Yeah. To one of them. True. Yeah. So, and and make even more beautiful yeah. through sharing. Yeah. Yes. Alhamdulillah. Yeah. 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 Banyak tangan. Yeah. Terima kasih. Sharing. Mm. Banyak knowledge. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, beautiful. Okay, thank you to that. Terima kasih Ustaz. Sama-sama kasih. Terima kasih Amir. Terima kasih ramai. Terima kasih. So that is Wasatia Series. Terima kasih. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh.